What's up everyone, my name is Tom and welcome to TechStream. So today, thanks to the guys at Thermaltake, we're taking a look at their new Commander C34 case. So the Commander C34 is a new series, the Commander series from Thermaltake. There is a few of them in the line and basically, I'll say it now, they're all the same, the only difference is the plastics. So pretty much everything I say here today stands for the entire Commander line. We're gonna be doing our typical sort of reviews we're going to take a look around the outside, look around the inside, and we're going to see what I think of it. So I've actually put a quick little system in here, and if I turn it on, first of all, you'll notice one thing. It is a little bit noisy. So this is, like I said, the C34. This is an addressable RGB case with tempered glass on a single side panel. We've got a solid steel panel on the other side and a nice big mesh top well mesh a mesh top shall we say okay so what we'll do i'll show you this side panel first which is tempered glass but unlike the traditional ones with four screws this one you simply there there is normally thumb screws in the back take them out but slide back tilt out and lift up nice and simple i've seen this design a couple of times from thermaltech recently i really like it the Obviously there's no ugly screws sticking out and the panel holds itself there just enough so it doesn't just drop off the moment you take the screws out. So nice little panel, uh, little steel frame around the outside, black painted border. There is a tint to it and I must admit it's a little bit on the dark light. Obviously I've got lots of studio lights in here. It is a little bit dark so my recommendation if you're going to build in one of these, fill it full of lights. So the other side panel is a case of pull and off it comes. Typical standard steel side panel. Like I said, the top panel, we do have lots of provisionings here on the top for uh, fan and radiator supports up to 360mm radiator as well as 120s and 240s. You can't fit a triple uh, 140 in there but you can do a 360. We also have on the top at the front here, it's actually part of the case, not the front panel. Okay, and we have an RGB button, which if I press, things are meant to happen. There we go. Things happen. Um, there is an RGB button, which you can press and cycle through. A few different options there. Okay, so you've got sort of like the typical, where is it? Showing all the colors going around in circles. You've got fixed colors, you can have dimming and you can have things like that. Um, we've got a pair of USB 3.0 type A, pair of uh, sort of audio inputs, headphone and a microphone. We've got a hard drive activity and a power light, a reset button and a power button. So front panel on this particular model here, nice big opened mesh plastic, loads of space for airflow. You can actually feel the air being sucked in. Okay, so there's no worries about air cool, uh, airflow or anything like that with this case. Nice big openings, good thing there. Styling is always a personal choice. Me personally, not a massive fan of this particular one. There is a Commander one I do like a little bit more, but they're all, personally I find them, the front panels to be a little bit on the extreme side, shall we say. Um, I am just gonna shut this down because one thing I don't like about it is it is a little bit noisy. So if I turn that off, we can unpull that, and now, so, that's our front panel, give you a little bit of a better look. And if I just tilt it forwards, there's stuck inside left in the front there. If I just tilt this forwards for you, here you can see that front eye that I just described. So if we now put it on the other side and I'll show you the back of the case. So the back of the case, this is the back of the case and primarily what it holds is your hard drives, your RGB controller, and your SSDs. So on this case, you have an option for three three and a halfs and two two and a halfs. The three and a half sleds will also hold two and a half, so you could fit up to five two and a halfs if you wanted to. But you've got one, two, and a third one down here for your three and a halfs. Simply unscrew these, take them out, fit your hard drive to it, screw them back in, wire them all in. Two and a half options here are exactly the same. And then this is our addressable RGB hub. Now, it is all using proprietary connectors to Thermaltake, so you can't plug other people's stuff into it. But 
hey, it's got pretty much all the fans it needs at the moment. Pair of, pair of 200 mil fans in the front and a single 120 non-RGB fan in the back. Now I haven't plugged the rear RGB fan into this header, into this header, into this hub, but there is a socket for it. We also have an LED out for some LED strips. I believe Thermaltec will be bringing them out. And we also have a connector at the top here to plug in a cable, which I've put down somewhere. Um, I put it down somewhere. They include with you a pair of cables. Okay, one for sort of the three pin connection and one for the, what looks like a normal RGB connection, but one of the holes is blocked off. So whether you're using Gigabyte or Asus, pretty much all the bases are covered with the two cables supplied. And that plugs in here and then into your addressable five volt header on your motherboard. Do not plug it into the, into the 12 volt normal RGB header. You will blow things up, okay? If your motherboard does not have the five volt addressable RGB, you can't use it, okay? Now this particular cable here, this is the power. It's labeled as COM1, but that's the power. And that goes to a nice SATA connection. No more Molex is to be found, great. This one here labeled RGB switch, pretty self-explanatory. This goes to the front IO for the RGB switch. You can just unplug it if you don't want to use it so you don't, it doesn't accidentally get pressed and changing it while you're using the software. But on the whole, things back here work quite good. There's plenty of space for cabling. Okay, We've got some nice neat holes here, one and two, for leading cables to your power, uh, to your motherboard, to your graphics cards, things like that. There is a nice conveniently located hole here for your eight pin uh, EPS connector. We do have one hole here sort of above the end of the graphics card for your front I.O. I must admit I would have liked to have seen a second one located a bit further back for the HD audio because HD audio is always just about there and there's no way so I've had to run it along the front. It's not the end of the world it just could have meant for a slightly cleaner front of house build. There are oodles though of clips for your uh, cable ties and they do include a good amount of cable ties with it they're not the strongest but there is enough there to be able to do pretty much what i've done here okay so if i flip it around a little bit more we can take a look at the back side now i have a big confession to make there's no rear io shield because i accidentally left this in the last thermal tape case that i reviewed and that's currently sitting in my loft not, sorry not my loft my parents loft, so I don't have access to it, and it's a bugbear of mine not having IO shields. So what we do have here though is the included 120mm fan I did mention earlier. There's also space for 140 there, but you may find that 140s will interfere with fancy uh, rear IO covers like this particular board has. Okay, we've then got seven standard PCIe slots, and then we've also got vertical GPU mounting. Okay, no cable included, but it is here, there is provision for it. I will note though. It is quite close to the front panel and uh, to the front panel, the side panel. So do remember though, things like uh, your dual fan cards and things like that, they may get choked. Not always best for GPU thermals. If you're doing custom water cooling, okay, not a problem. Power supply mounted in the bottom. The power supply does actually mount to a removable frame. So you mount the power supply to the frame and then slot it in from the back. You will not get it in from the side. Power supply goes in from the back with the frame attached. So now, let's take a look at the pretty side. So, I've actually only put a sort of a relatively basic system in here, but we've got an AIO cooler, we've got a, a decent length graphics card, power supply in the bottom, a Thermaltake RGB jobby. Um, and overall, yeah, I didn't have any problems at all. Cooler mounted to the top, no issues. It will mount in the front, but A, you've got the airflow from those 200 mil fans. Those are not static pressure fans, they're not radiator fans, they are airflow fans, not the best suited to block those off. And the hoses are a little bit on the tight side. Top mounting is a better option and I think it leaves things looking a little bit cleaner. Okay, so we do have some ventilation over the top of our power supply. Here is that bracket that I mentioned for the vertical GPU. Cable not included, but you can buy them. It simply screws in, okay, to the thing and then your graphics card slots in. There's not a massive amount to say really. We've got a nice power supply cover. We do have a little window. These things, I don't know if I like them. I haven't decided. You, you've got to spend a lot of dosh on a power supply to want to show it off. And this is like a, an 85, 90 pound case. You're not going to be spending a lot of dosh on a power supply that you want to show off. When you're building, no offense, but if you're building a computer in a case of this price, you're not spending four or 500 pounds on something like a, an Asus ROG Thor 
with a pretty screen and everything, you're going to be putting something more akin to what I've got here, which, okay, it looks okay, but I haven't decided about these windows. We do also have at the front a whopping great big hole here above where that bottom hard drive is, and there's also a few lines of screws, across, uh, not screws, holes across here. And I was thinking, what could you use it for? Actually, it would be a great thing for doing custom loop. You could mount your pump res combo by here. You could have a top mounted radiator. This case here is actually very well set up for a nice, quick and easy, sort of like a budget custom loop. Overall then, what do I think of the case? Yeah, it's really nice. Like I said, my only bugbear is the front fans are not speed controllable. Okay, yeah, you can adjust the LEDs and everything via software on your motherboard or pressing the button on the top. But there is no way of connecting that RGB controller to that motherboard. I've mentioned this a few times about all of the cases from Thermaltake I've reviewed recently that use this controller. I'm still going to mention it now. Come on. The first version that they did of this, which was the V200 RGB. Not addressable, but RGB. I really liked that one because that particular board you could connect to a PWM header on your motherboard and all of the fans were controlled in speed and you had the option for controlling lights. On these ones you've lost that speed and as much as pretty lights are cool, they're not very quiet. They're a little bit loud. It's not obtrusively loud, but it's there, you'll know it's there. But apart from that, the case is really well made. There's really nice design features, like I said, about custom water cooling. You'd not normally see custom water cooling thought about in a budget case like this. The build quality was nice. I've had no sharp corners or anything like that. Everything's nicely rounded. Do I like the look of it? Okay, this particular one, I'm not a massive fan of the front panel, but there is the C34, this one. There's the C36. There's a few others. They've all got different front panels, but they are basically the same case. So you can choose one, a different one, if you prefer. But overall, if it wasn't if it wasn't for the lack of speed control on the fans, it would be a massive two thumbs up review for this case. Unfortunately, I can't give it a two thumbs up because I do personally think the speeds are a little bit irritating on those front fans. So it's it's a one thumb up. It's a really nice case. It's almost there at the price point. They've done really really well. It's quite often I see when they when a company tries to do things like this, the RGB, in a case of this sort of price something always seems to go. It's either, well, it's normally the build quality of the rest of it. They've cheaped out on the build quality to get the RGB in. Thermal take at this particular point, they haven't. So yeah, great. So that's about it for the Commander C34 from Thermal Take. I, like I said, I like it. Now let me know any of your thoughts or opinions down below in the comment section. I always take my time to go through them and answer questions. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, Give it a thumbs down, not a problem at all. And if you want to see more of me, I'm here every Saturday at 6pm British time. And don't forget, if you do want to see me, click the subscribe button, click the little notification bell, and I will be back at the same time next week. Thank you very much.